What do you think of when you travel? Is it the people you'll meet? Or the places you'll see? Or is it how hard it will be to get there? The Bay Area has 27 public transit agencies, freshly painted bike lanes, and a handful of walkable communities. In fact, San Francisco is considered one of the best cities for living without a car. However, it is still ranked one of the cities with the worst traffic in the nation. Bay Area commuters spend over 100 hours a year in traffic. For San Francisco and Oakland drivers, that's 45 gallons of fuel down the drain. With rising gas prices and growing attention around environmental costs, the concept of driving less has become a hot topic in the country. Despite being a great city to go carless, what's up with all the car traffic in San Francisco? Are other transportation options not as good as the car? We hit the streets to find out. <laughs> We set up an experiment to find out how other modes of transportation in San Francisco compare to the car. We walked. I figured there was a lot of people. Biked. Took public transit. To be a popular line. You know. And drove. I only found out how to ride. Evaluating the pros and cons by the time it took, the cost, and the level of comfort we've experienced. We decided on a relatively short route to get a sense of the overall travel environments in the city. Even in the Bay Area, trips that people take in cars are short. They might seem long because the landscape looks sprawling, but most trips that people make in cars um, are short trips. Uh, most trips in Ubers and Lyfts are short trips. Whether it's to buy some food or meet up with friends, short trips make up much of our day. These are trips between 1 to 10 miles by car. For our experiment, we chose a route between Dolores Park and Westfield Mall, which is around 2.5 miles. Our first mode of travel, walking. Obviously, walking takes the longest for all trips and costs nothing. So we judge walking primarily by the level of comfort and the ease of access to nearby stores and services. In San Francisco, the overall environment appeared built for pedestrians. They were everywhere in sight. I really don't feel like I am uncomfortable walking here or anything. Like I, It's a pretty nice walk. And it helps that the sidewalks are pretty wide and not that tight or narrow. Even next to the freeway, Pedestrians aren't forgotten. The way that this sidewalk is built, the way that just this entire crosswalk is built, it does make me feel pretty safe. Like, I don't feel like I have to look back at any cars because there is a stoplight. Above all, there's no need to wait for the mall to eat or shop. There are a lot of different businesses around here that are in close proximity with each other. Like, already walking through Market Street, you're going to see so many different stores, all different types of things from foods. There's like a mattress company right here. A lot of things are available within this street. Of course, it wasn't perfect. Say booger. Hello. Huh? <laughs> it did. It did. Aside from a few mishaps, there were many pros to walking in San Francisco. Sidewalks were wide enough for multiple pedestrians to pass through. There were many crosswalks. We found stores and restaurants throughout our 46 minute walk. And best of all, it's free. But the high walkability of the city didn't explain why the streets get so congested. We turned to biking to see if we could get answers. San Francisco Bicycle Road 45, Valencia Street. Valencia Street, all right. Ooh. Biking in San Francisco varied from area to area. You really have to wave on to let people know you're coming through. 
because everyone's in a rush to get out of their parking spaces. I'm gonna be turning left. Thanks. This was one of the more consistent bike lanes in the area, but with outdoor seating on the side, it still felt cramped. Occasionally, it's necessary to move in between cars to get into the lanes. Upon entering Market Street, there were finely painted bike lanes separate from the main road. San Francisco has made strides to allocate space for biking, but it still may not be for everyone. There are times when you'll be in close contact with car traffic, me. especially when the roads are tight enough. You can hear me. Biking can be efficient and low cost in many cases. In San Francisco, there is space for bikes indicated by painted lanes. Though, the city could use some consistency with their markings. It can also be challenging for those overwhelmed by tight spaces and surrounding traffic. When it came to public transit within San Francisco, we were met with several options. There were buses, a light rail system, and the rapid transit system that could bring us to the mall. Fortunately, from Dolores Park, there was a light rail line that would run directly into the mall every 15 minutes. While it was easy to spot the stop where the tram would arrive, we couldn't help but notice its dilapidated state. As you can see, it's very old, it's very dirty, it's not really updated. Um, at least there's like a clock here to tell you the time. But you would definitely need a phone of some sort to check out the information of how to get to different places with public transit, which is a bit inconvenient and it doesn't seem like they're really doing anything to make it look more updated, to make it look more modern and help people, especially who are not from around here, um, have an easier time figuring out where to go. Without prior knowledge, this button may be a mystery to many. Turns out it gave the current time. The time is 4.16 p.m. But what's the use of that when you don't even know when the next train will arrive? Aside from a lacking tram stop that would require you to have a device for information, the light rail arrived without delay and it was a smooth ride from there. There was even a direct entrance to the mall from the metro station. We are here. Minus the lack of signage at the tram stop, the transit ride was straightforward and didn't require transfers on our route. The ride is only a few minutes longer compared to the time it takes to the drive. The straightforward ride was a testament to the light rail's efficiency. But has it been a solution to San Francisco's traffic? We finally tackled driving on this route to see if it still surpasses all other transportation. As we pulled out of Dolores Park, it wasn't difficult to notice the number of cars parked along the side. But the city didn't seem to be built for drivers. Oh, red light. Again, another red light that you can't see for no reason. Like, I don't understand why they can't put stop lights that go out into the middle of the road like they do in every single other suburb so that I can actually see what traffic laws I have to obey. Because if I can't see the light, how am I supposed to know if I'm supposed to stop? And that's really dangerous because there are so many pedestrians here in San Francisco. While traffic wasn't horrendous, we weren't moving fast because there were cars surrounding us on all sides. It's kind of hard to park here too because people like to pack their cars in so tight because a lot of these spots don't have marked spots for parallel parking. San Francisco is such an old city and that it was formed before the time of cars. You know, the only place San Francisco has to build new like infrastructure and stuff is up, but that means more people come in, but there's no room for people to leave their vehicles anywhere. So that has just caused the problem of parking in the city. The drive was smooth sailing up until we reach Westfield Mall, where we face the bane of driver's existence in the city. Parking. Oh, I found the public parking. That is very, I don't know why they make the public parking so hard to find yet so, it's so big, but you can't find it at all. Now, because we weren't gonna pay a fee just to stop and commentate, we ended the drive without actually parking. Turns out, these were the exorbitant parking fees in the area. The main benefit of driving is staying in your own space, free from outside conditions. But San Francisco has extremely limited and expensive parking. Stoplights can also be hard to spot, 
which is an issue for drivers when facing incoming pedestrians. With more cons than pros, why is driving still popular in the city? San Francisco offers other adequate transportation when compared to outside areas. We took a similar route in a Bay Area suburb to see just how different it can be. We picked up several differences while walking our route to Concord. Large residential areas meant no quick access to stores and services. We're like about 10 minutes through this walk and yeah, it has been pretty residential. Uh, pretty quiet, not much people walking. The need to walk such long distances to get anywhere can be explained by the substantial spacing between locations, which tend to have massive parking lots. Pedestrians are also expected to walk through freeway entrances without any protection. A car can just turn into the lane at any moment, so it is a bit of a risk there. Unlike San Francisco, painted bike lanes were out of sight in Concord. While it felt less crowded due to expansive roads, bikes didn't necessarily get more space. It's very narrow. It's not my favorite. See, all the, see, all the cars are swerving off to try and avoid me, especially that big truck. See, I, I would have gotten uh, clobbered there if it hadn't swer you know, gone off to the side. There's always that uncertainty that one bad driver like, like that one who, could, who wasn't paying attention to the road and it moved too far to the right could easily knock me off my bike. Public transit in Concord also paled in comparison to that in San Francisco. Besides the fact that the bus stop was barely a stop, buses rarely pass through there. It's every hour. Yeah, there's one bus that passes by here every hour. We were accompanied by litter and speeding cars as we waited. The ride itself wasn't much of a problem. Though, there was a little mishap when figuring out where to transfer buses as our phones gave out different information. The ride took 35 minutes, three times as long as it takes to get there by car. And speaking of cars, getting to the mall with one was the smoothest option we had. After all, there was generous road space and ample free parking. Yeah, like right there, there's a giant parking garage that I just drove past and it's probably about three stories tall and then here's a, another parking lot that goes about five blocks down this shopping strip. And of course, plenty of parking when we got to the mall. In Concord, it makes sense that people stick to cars. But in a city like San Francisco, we still wonder why there's significant traffic and cars fighting for space. Do so many people in San Francisco love driving? Or is it not only the people of San Francisco who are causing the traffic? <laughs> According to the 2018 San Francisco Mobility Trend Report, vehicle registration per capita has dropped by 3% since 2010. Residents are driving less. But the overall population has grown, increasing the number of registered vehicles by 6%. What could be a cause of traffic is, in fact, the city's employment growth which has been three times that of the population growth. Many people who travel to San Francisco don't live there. They come from all over the Bay Area and beyond. So there's a lot of different reasons that people are driving, but those who are fond of their car, I would argue, is a, is a smaller uh, percentage than, than you'd think. But I would argue that the majority of people are not so much fond of cars, but are trapped in a built environment and a transportation system that provides very little choice, even in the Bay Area. As we saw, not all of the Bay Area experiences the same transportation options available in the city. And it's not just Concord. With people accustomed to driving in nearby areas, it becomes clearer why they choose to get to the city by car. And even with public transit systems running into San Francisco, they can be lacking. When you get out into the, the Bay Area suburbs and the Bay Area region, really transit service quality drops uh, rapidly. You have BART, but BART is a limited geography. There are 50 BART stations but nine of them are in San Francisco alone. The system doesn't even run through the northern and southern parts of the Bay Area, 
Of course, BART isn't the only long-distance transit system running to San Francisco. Caltrain runs from Silicon Valley into the city, which is a route that BART doesn't cover. However, getting into the downtown area, where many commute to, would require transfers to other transit systems. There's so many different agencies providing the service and they don't provide the information in a way that makes it easy to, to understand um, that there's a lot of stress involved in taking transit, especially to somewhere you've never been before. And so often, and I have personal experience with this and, I, and I've talked to hundreds of other people, you, you get burned. You, you try to use it, you, you, it's the best incentive, whether, whether you're doing it because you have to do it or whether just you really want to take public transit because you think it's the right thing. So often you end up in a situation where you're like cursing yourself because you're saying this is ridiculous. I don't think it's realistic that we will ever get everyone using public transit. Of course, there's a lot of types of trips that you need a car to use, but uh, we need to have a more effective public transit system that uh, can be easier to use for more types of trips. Aside from long distance commutes into the city, short trips could also be worsening traffic. Not from personal cars per se, but ride sharing services. I was saying earlier that a lot of those trips are short. If you, if you actually, if you look at Ubers when it, when they went public, they had to, they had like this financial report, and they were, you know, they were talking about how their market is short trips in urban, dense urban areas. So they're basically competing with bicycles and urban public transportation. A report by the San Francisco County Transportation Authority suggested that ride service companies accounted for half the increase in congestion between 2010 and later 2016. The car traffic in and around San Francisco can be attributed to a variety of reasons. What we found through our travel experiment is that despite some issues, San Francisco has more options for traveling carless. But people entering from outside the city are used to a much different environment, one you cannot get around easily without a car. And they don't always have convenient ways of getting into the city without one. Many cars you see in San Francisco may not even be owned by residents. Cars can bring the ease of convenience, but at what price? From insurance to rising gas prices, the high costs pile on, making the car a depreciating money pit. But with all the challenges in our environment that hinder us from traveling easily, many people still turn to it. A multitude of changes need to be made but public policy and opinions would need to follow suit. And until that happens, we'll be moving shortly.